One of my subscribers saw a video of mine and wanted to know how I ended up making my drag engraver. Now here's one I made that would fit in a collet for my bigger machine. But I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to take this one apart because I, for one it's just ugly as sin. But basically all it is is a body with a hole drilled through for the drag bit to go into. It's spring loaded and it's captive by a drill stop on one end and just a push on uh, collar at the other. And the idea is, is when it comes down it'll compress and put some pressure on it. Then when you drag it, it'll actually scrape, uh, scrape into the material that you're trying to engrave. So I've got a machine back behind me that has got a spindle that fits inside this bore. So I am going to turn this conglomerate junk of scrap metal that I've got into one that will fit in here. This way I can loosen the bolts, take the NSK spindle out, then take the drag engraver, slide it in, lock it in, and go. Be direct replacement. You don't have to worry about losing your spindle squareness or tram or anything like that. So I'm going to try and use these two black pieces, but I don't know if they're long enough to go in my lathe chuck and be able to do work on them. But I've got this billet piece here. That the first thing I have to do is turn down the OD, and I'll probably leave... A step to where when I slide this in it registers on the top surface of the mount and it goes in the exact same spot every time mainly doing that just because I have to hold this and turn it down I don't want to really flip it over or have to indicate it in because it's not this big of a project and the reason why I use plastic for the ends is when you drill it or I may drill it or I may even just use a 1 8th 1 8th end mill to bore a hole in it it kind of shrinks after you put a hole in it which would grab onto this and make it just a little bit tighter and more more sturdy more stiff you know something like that anyway i'm not going to take you along in the machining process i'm just gonna update as each piece is done and we'll see what i come up with at the end may not come up with anything you may never see this video. here we've got the od of our drag graver holder turned down and it slides in there really nice if a little tight so I may just clean that up with some sandpaper to get a nice fit through that it's pretty hot too so the next thing to do is I'll go ahead and tackle oh that's hot tackle that put a chamfer here then I'm gonna drill a hole all the way through and probably bore it out on each end so I have a specific number to turn the end pieces. And it looks like I've already lost one of my end pieces, so I might have to use the white nylon, which I hate nylon. But, onward and upward. Alright, so we have our first hole. And I ran out of propellant in my can of WD-40. It's got plenty left in it. But there was just no propellant left and I don't know if any of you know the trick but if you take your air compressor hose press it up against the nozzle release the air from the air compressor hose and then push down on the button on the can you'll actually force air force air back into it and now I have propellant again so now I'm gonna go ahead and bust out a half inch hole so here we've got this part finished Slides in perfectly into the mount. Got my step on the end. So now all I have to do is I have to turn this, put it in frame. I've got to turn a little section of this down to where it'll fit in that hole. And the same thing back over here on this side. I have to turn the other piece down to where it'll slide into that hole. And it'll have a step so they don't go into the bore everything will register together and drill the center hole put it all together onward and upward all right so we got this side done and this thing will push on here pretty firmly I'll get this thing all pressed together when it's all said and done so now I'm to the point where I need a through hole all the way through and I'm probably gonna make the other half on the back side of this but I have got 
a one eighth ball nose end mill in my chuck and I'm just gonna punch a hole through it probably flip it over I'll make that decision here in a minute but we're gonna move forward okay so I decided not to use that same piece of plastic to do both ends because I would have never gotten that hole to be concentric without indicating it in so I've got this one turned down and I did a center drill and I left a big chamfer on the that edge so when you go to put a new drag engraving bit into it that taper will help line it up and get it into the hole so you don't have to take the whole assembly back apart so now I've just got to punch a hole same two millimeter end mill and the reason why I'm using an end mill is because it'll drill a round hole whereas a drill bit does not drill a round hole it's more of a triangle shape so I'll get that punch through I'll turn this OD on this step right here close to the diameter of the body if it's not already there already and part it off clean it up and on this one you can see I actually put a nice little chamfer on it but that's just pretty clean it up and then we'll get over to the bench and put one of these together so here we are on the bench and here's all the pieces that we need to make this thing happen we've got our drill stop spring backstop two pieces and body now one thing i didn't mention and i always try and do this afterwards after i get everything pretty much done is i will stack them all together and then see how long my drag engraver is and if i have to cut anything down so let's go ahead and put this together so this is this is the front so there's our front and I'm going to try and do this all pretty much one-handed. <sighs> Press together. Beautiful. Now this I intentionally left, this diameter I intentionally left a little big so I can just throw it in the lathe and trim it down. There it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and pause you and I'm going to get the drag graver set up because I'm doing this one-handed. So all I've done was press that on just a little bit. They slide pretty easy. Here's the diamond point of my drag engraver. This thing would ever freaking focus. And it's essentially just going to drop straight in here. Should feel a little bit of resistance. Push it through. Find something to set this thing on. So I can work on it one-handed then we get our spring maybe and then I know I'm doing a shitty job of this I'm sorry the drill stop I have an Allen wrench somewhere I thought but anyway that's all there's to it is we've got a body these pieces go up inside the body just a little bit to give it a little bit of extra side load support drilling the hole in the plastic with that end mill makes it to where it, it drills the hole but then the plastic shrinks up a little bit and plus it adds a little bit of lubricity to it then all we have to do is set up our tension now i like to pull on it and lock the set screw just so i'm not pulling on this and this is just here to keep it from falling apart if you have a z retract or you go to put it in the machine it just keeps everything retained in the entire body actually i got that pretty decent i might just leave it alone but i try to put the drill stop pretty close to the point lock it down push everything back and then slide this one forward so it's all stayed retained you don't want very much pressure on it in this state at all. Then when you go to do a G-code where you're going to drag engrave, do it pretty shallow. If you're in millimeters, say half a mil, whatever that is, equates into 20, 30 thou. Set this on Z0, touching the material. Then every time it goes to do a cut, it pushes on it 
and it compresses the spring and you might have to play with it to say, okay, I might need to go three quarters of a millimeter or one millimeter to get a good solid depth and a good drag line. And the other good thing about this is if you don't have a whole lot of spring tension on it, you can set it pretty deep and it'll actually follow irregularities in surface material. Now you're not going to go over a huge uh, radius or something like that, a huge bump, but if your surface material has a little bit of a wave to it, this will actually allow, the spring pressure will allow it to go down and up and down and up as the machine is going left to right. Sorry about the crappy videoing. I don't really do these because of this situation where I'm a building something single-handed, blah, 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 blah. But for the guy who wanted the video on it, there you go.